can you can you tell us why that's a fallacy? Um, because yeah. in my understanding, and I'll let you take it take it, is that we actually need more protein um, as we age um, because of some of this anabolic resistance that kind of sets in. So I I I, I feel it's a fallacy. Um, but we have like the Dan Butners of the world and the mm-hmm. Victor Longos and, and, and like, I yep. don't, you know, I don't want to like poo poo cause I, I, you know, I respect anyone who's dedicated their life to trying to better understand the human condition and what is the optimal diet for humans. But it just seems not to make sense to me. So yeah. with that, I yeah. wind you up and I yeah. allow you yeah. to now, unleash. Now I'm yes. unspringing. Yeah. So yeah, yeah <laughs> I, I have very strong feelings about it because I believe that whether it's deliberate or accidental data has been horrifically misunderstood or or even construed to fit an ideology. So uh, a few things. In humans, we have zero, zero evidence that that proves that protein consumption will will reduce longevity. There's no conclusive evidence. We have correlational evidence that is all over the board, all over the board. Even Walter Longo's own work found that there was like during people's like or during their 50s, people who ate the most protein tended to have the highest mortality, which would fit that overall view that protein promotes mortality. But even in his own published data, at around the age of 60, 65, it went inverse. It flipped. And at that point, the people who ate the most protein had the lowest mortality. And that is a theme that has been published across multiple papers, particularly in in, in the recent probably 10-ish years. So suffice it to say, the evidence on humans with protein and longevity is very, very complicated. And and there's no evidence to to suggest conclusively one way or the other. I would say that part of what's important, as you noted, is that the older we get, the more protein we need to sustain our lean mass. And muscle and bone mass is one of the greatest predictors of mortality. Inversely, people with the highest muscle mass are the least likely to die. Well, good luck maintaining muscle mass if you're not eating a lot of protein. Now, if we leave the humans to the side for a moment <clears throat> and we get more mechanistically into an- animal models that where we can control everything, we can measure them their entire life from the day they're born to the day they die. Animal models like mice who have a slight protein deficiency in their diet will live a little longer than the animals that have uh, ad libitum or free access to protein. That So that supports that general idea. However, they also have almost no fertility. They do not reproduce. And, and that is sort of this irony that, yeah, sure, you can live longer, but you – what good is your life if you can't, you know, there's no family involved in this. Now, again, we have to be cautious trying to translate the animal studies to the human studies. And and these animals are living in a perfectly controlled little box, literally their whole life. And so their muscle mass doesn't matter as much. They're not a human who's walking through the kitchen who stumbles and now has to grab the counter to stop themselves from falling. And if they don't have enough muscle mass, well, they didn't stop themselves. They hit their head, they broke their hip, and now they're going to die. So an animal is so artificial in this regard that it's hard to rely on too much. But I do feel compelled to mention that there are animal studies to show a causality that with some degree of protein restriction, they did in fact live longer, but there were consequences that in my mind- Was it protein restriction or caloric restriction? Yeah, that's a very good question. They did a protein. They'd had a protein restriction. It was just they protein. lived longer. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but there Sorry. are. But you're proper in noting that the calorie restricted access or a side to it as well, because that also, I believe, the findings are essentially the same. Now, however, in the midst of this, um, kind of poo pooing dietary protein and wanting to avoid it for living longer, we we not only have to appreciate the effect of the muscle, but we have to kind of desperately appreciate the fact that with with humans and our survival depending on the maintenance of our lean mass and the maintenance of our uh, of our of our brain and the fats that come with those brains the further to kind of come back bring it back to the topic we were touching on earlier the further we're getting from animal sourced foods the more nutrient deficient we're becoming not only in nutrients at a kind of micro level but also just good fats and and these best proteins we, we don't want to avoid protein in an effort to live longer. Um, moreover, 
I guess back to the fertility aspect in men, at least we know that the further men get from animal sourced foods, the lower their testosterone levels are and the lower their sperm quality gets. So this to me further suggests the fact that a, a diet that is devoid of animal products is a diet that is incompatible to the human species. And kind of coming back to, you know, we were talking about you know, a menopausal woman, let's say now she doesn't have that estrogen, that estrogen, that estrogen protective effect, and her fats become a bit more hypertrophic. If we are able to maintain or even add to her lean muscle mass, let's say, then that mu like one of the things we know about muscle, of course, is it is a beautiful glucose sink, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. a kind of independent of insulin, really, it can kind of yep. take glucose up, phosphorylate it, and then it kind of stays in the muscle for the use of the musculoskeletal system. And then now when we are, when we have a, you know, musculoskeletal system, we'll say that can take in excess glucose, then you're negating the need, we'll say for insulin to kind of pop, like get ready and rev up and get the glucose out of the bloodstream. And we're all, we're going to be protecting that fat cell from becoming too big, right? So then it, we're, so yep. we're protecting that hypertrophic effect as well. Oh.